I online shop. Playing video games with my brothers. Snapchat, Instagram, Visco, YouTube. Play video games. Instagram, Snapchat, Pinterest. I'd like to say that the bulk of it was spent doing something productive. Um, it's not. I've always been drawn to screens. My mom tells me that even when I was a baby, I couldn't keep my eyes off the TV. Once I was older, I spent an entire summer FaceTiming one of my friends, alone in my bedroom with the blinds pulled down, staring into the blue light of my iPod touch. After I was finally allowed to use Instagram, I studied the visual perfection of the Instagram accounts I followed and wondered how I could ever measure up. My name is Bryn, and I'm 16 years old. Once I was old enough that hanging out with my friends meant sitting side by side while looking at our phones, or taking a hundred pictures of each other just to find the one we could post, then deleting that picture if it didn't reach a certain number of likes, I began to wonder, how are screens affecting my generation? According to Pew Research, 45% of teens are online almost constantly, and Common Sense Media found that we are on screens for more than seven hours a day, not including for schoolwork. What's the impact of spending that much time face to face with a screen? So the way it used to be raising kids, it was like we managed TV, videos, and like Disney Channel. Not until iPads and iPhones came out that it became a really different landscape for raising kids and how they use them. I would say at least 50% of the kids in my class are on their phones at any given second. And it's the culture, it's an addiction, so to speak. You can't look around the classroom and see somebody else on the phone and not have to get on your phone. Ooh, let's check something. I was really resistant to letting my kids have phones, but I also understood that in order for them to have social lives, they had to be able to use a phone. That's just where our culture is right now. I didn't want my kids to be handicapped and not have access to friends because they didn't have access to phones. <laughs> It's clear that it's challenging to manage screens, but how do screens affect us when left unmanaged? So we are absolutely social creatures. It's both evolutionarily where we needed each other to survive, as well as just that is our nature, that is how we're wired. Do my kids have solid friendships? They have some solid friendships, their friendships aren't as deep as I would like them to be. I think that screen culture has made relationships more superficial. You don't have to have social skills anymore. You don't need it. You can't talk to the guy you like at school, okay, just text him. Text them that night, because it's so much easier. Texting always cheapens things, you know, it takes all the like, real emotion out of it. Like to be able to read someone's face when they say something to you, and then just having to assume what they think. It's interaction without consequence. And in, a rea in reality, if it's interaction without consequence, is there really that much meaning to it? Teenagers know that communicating through screens doesn't necessarily capture the whole message that we're trying to get across. Screens are one-dimensional, but they're convenient, 
so we use them more than any other form of communication. So unfortunately, because of increased screen use, we're seeing your generation or teenage generations not being able to interact with each other as appropriately uh, as we would typically see. If you are removed from that physical contact with someone and you're now engaging with them across a device, you can threaten the integrity of that relationship. How do the people actually think about those two forms of interaction? Is one of the reasons that face-to-face -face interaction is better is that just because people think that it's better, because they believe that it's more real in some way, and that's really changing the impact of the interaction in a way that isn't inherent to something about typing in text or speaking in person, but it's just about attitudes and perception. Even the experts disagree. Yes, devices can diminish our ability to communicate face-to-face. -face. Also, if we communicate intentionally and thoughtfully, we can minimize the ways devices change our communication. Social media was created so that we can stay connected and so that we can be friends with people that, are across, that we knew that moved across the world. I have a friend who went to school with me in sixth grade and then lived in, and now is living in Africa. And I still talk to her all the time over social media. So there are positive aspects to social media also. I think you can enhance your friendships. You can do a better job of planning. You can have access to information that we never had before. Too much of anything is usually negative. So. Eating is good, sleeping is good, working and studying is good, but if you do too much of those, those are then considered bad. And I think the same thing with social media, if you do it in moderation, then there are positive components to it. If you do too much, then um, it becomes negative. I have clients coming in all the time, so excited about an experience that they had. They posted it on social media and they will complain, I only got two likes, I only got two this. And they were excited about this event and they wanted to share it, but they're valuing the event based on the reaction that they're getting from other people. And so it quickly changes to, unless I'm getting this external validation, then it's not worth it. High school is just such an environment for social comparison. Uh, being successful in society means everything. You're surrounded by the same people day in, day out. You can't really escape this fishbowl of an environment. Um, and then social media means you go home and you're still surrounded by all of the same people and everything that they're doing. And the social hierarchy is even further reinforced. On Instagram, I post almost entirely based on what other people will think about me when they look at my posts. Right after I post, I check my phone constantly to see how many likes the post is getting. I always make sure to post at the time when my friends are on their phones so that nobody misses it. It's a lot of pressure. I have to, I have to like check the box for every time that I post a picture or whatever instead of just like having fun with it. I have to like make sure that it's like picture perfect. There's a part of you you want people to see online and then the vast majority you don't want people to see. I like looking at people's posts, but personally when I have to post, it makes me anxious. There's like me, and then there's like phone me. Because there's like me on Instagram with my, I don't know, like my Photoshop and my filters and whatever. It's kind of like everything that I think of and like who I am is like put through a filter of like, oh, perfect me. And it's like not always 100% real. It matters to Bryn what her Instagram account looks like, and she's really cautious about posting anything that doesn't fit within her aesthetic. It needs to be beautiful and polished. I almost feel like it's an outward expression of how Bryn feels on the inside. She needs everything around her to look polished and beautiful so that people see a beautiful, polished person worry about it for teenagers for really amplifying uh, the importance of social comparison and making people feel like they have to 
put their best foot forward constantly, own the best things, to have the most fun, go to the craziest parties. All of these things can really amplify each other. Pen, Social media needs to be supplemented with real interaction because it, it's good to maintain friendships, but to actually get friendships, I think there's this interaction component that's really important. And um, friendships, deep friendships are messy. Sometimes you screw up and you need support. You need to say, I need help. Um, you need to be vulnerable. I think that's very difficult to do over a screen and really the only way that you can do that is with interaction. So I've been reading a lot about the loneliness epidemic lately and about isolation. It seems unclear to me exactly what the relationship is between loneliness and screen time or social media, but I do think that as parents, we have the responsibility to train our kids and to learn with our kids about the best ways to use our devices so that we avoid letting our devices lead us into loneliness or isolation. Loneliness is there to tell you that you should be doing something. How can I change my behavior? Instead, what we tend to do is we take that loneliness and we avoid and we isolate instead of giving it the action that it needs. People are saying a lot that social media is good for people struggling with like depression or anxiety. And I like it spreads awareness of plenty of things and that's great. But people aren't forced to actually do something. They're allowed to just wallow in whatever they're dealing with because they can find all these other people which are, who are dealing with it too, which is great. You know, you're not alone in it. But you can't just be dealing with something, no other people are dealing with it, be like, okay, I'm not alone. Now I'm gonna just go on my phone and talk to them about how our lives suck. Um, I use screens to get away from the real world. To, if I, uh, if I'm down, like if I'm feeling upset, or if I, and I've had a stressed out day, I'll use my screen and I'll sort of. It's the same reason people read books. I disappear into a different world, and I forget about my problems. I, when I'm off my phone, I get, I'm more productive and I get more stuff done and I feel more like accomplished, and it's just like I feel not as like weighed down when I'm off my phone. I do wish I spent less time on screens. I feel like I spend a little too much, but I have become sort of attached to this feeling of being separated, being in my own world. I've always felt lonely after hours of screen time. Somehow, despite communicating with friends via text and social media, I often just feel more alone. The days that I don't use screens because I'm occupied with other things, I feel so much happier and more accomplished. I think one of the things that I'm torn about with this whole idea of like, do we just pull it from kids and say, We're, you can't get on your devices all day? I think it's an idea but these devices aren't going anywhere. If I stick with my belief and philosophy that our job as parents is to launch kids, then just fully taking it away is probably not gonna be the answer. It changes so fast, there's no way for us to adapt with the problem. We're always behind it. And again, we want them to be connected. We want them to be plugged in. We want them to be able to be technologically, I don't know, literate and everything else. But controlling it and getting them going the right direction with it and having the knowledge and stuff, using it for good, not evil, you know, we're losing that battle. When we think about how to move forward with the best way to use technology, we must understand that there's no one right answer. There's barely even a right question. 
parents, schools, today's teenagers, tomorrow's teenagers, we are all part of this new age of technology. All we can do is learn how to move forward while accepting technological advances into our lives in the best ways that we can.